So today we're going to look at simultaneous equations and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend about half a minute or a minute looking at the general idea, the principles behind solving simultaneous equations and I'll do that by going through a very very quick simple example and then for the rest of the video I'm going to go through all the different types of situations that you might come across because although the principle is the same, the technique is really the same there are lots of slight differences between the different types of simultaneous equation that you might have come across. As ever, there will be practice questions over at the website at mathskitchen.com and I'll put a link down below uh, as well as a link up here. Welcome to Maths Kitchen. I want to make it as easy and as quick as possible for you to improve your maths. So even though these videos can sometimes be quite long, I always start with a brief introduction and then I go into some specific question types. You can see those on screen there. So if you just need help with a particular type of question, you can jump straight to that and I put links to those in the description. So the concept of simultaneous equations is, is quite a simple one, but it's quite a clever one as well. Imagine the following situation. You've gone to the cinema and you've bought two adult tickets and three children's tickets, and that costs you £30. You can see I've written that there, you know, 2a add 3c equals 30. So I've written it like an equation. Now let's assume that we don't actually know how much each of the tickets costs, and that's what we're going to try and work out. Well, given the information that we've got, we can't really work it out. Maybe adults are going in free. So the adults get in free, and that £30 is just for three children. So each child is £10, and each adult ticket is £0. Or maybe the adult tickets are £8 each, so that would be £16 and then those remaining three children's tickets cost £14. We could divide that by three to work out the cost of each children's tickets. The point is, there's just loads and loads of possibilities, an infinite number of possibilities, really. Um, so we can't say for certain how much an adult ticket costs and how much a child ticket costs. However, when we introduce a second equation, a second bit of information, for example, the fact that one adult ticket and three children's tickets cost £21. Assuming that all those tickets, you know, the adult tickets and the children's tickets cost the same in both examples, now we can work it out. If you look at that second example, they've got the exact same number of children. The only difference is that there's one less adult and the cost is £9 cheaper. That must mean that the extra adult costs £9, therefore each adult costs £9. And once we've worked that out, we can go and work out how much uh, the children have to pay, can't we? So if we know that the adult is £9, well, two adults would be £18. That means those three children must be £12 between them, or £4 each. Or we could do it using the second example. One adult is £9, therefore the three children must also be £12, £4 each. Whichever way you do it, you should get the same answer. And those are the underlying principles that help us to solve any simultaneous equations or any linear simultaneous equations using this method, the elimination method. And the idea is that you remove one of the unknowns. In this case, we were able to work out, we essentially we were able to exclude the children by just working out, ah, an adult cost nine pounds then we could go back and work out what the children were. And that's what we're going to do with all the following examples. But I'm going to show you the specific techniques and the way you can set your workings out, all that kind of stuff. Right, let's get started then. Example number one. In this question, we have 2z add 7y is equal to 23, and 2z add 3y is equal to 11. You can see in both of those equations, we have the same number of z's. We say that z has the same coefficient in both of them. Both got the same number of z's, right? Now that's good. That's really helpful for us because what we can do is we can subtract one whole equation from another, from the other one. And in doing that, we remove all of the z's. Let me show you what that means in practice. I'm going to label both of my equations. I'm going to label the first one a and I'm going to label the second one b that's pretty good practice just to keep things clear. 
And then I'm going to make a note that what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that second equation from the first one. So I'm doing a minus b. And you must subtract everything in the second equation from the first equation. So I have to do 23 take away 11, which is 12. I've got to do 7y take away 3y, which is 4y. And then 2z take away 2z, that's 0. The z's have gone. So we're just left now with 4y is equal to 12. Well, if 4y is 12, one lot of y must be 3, because 4 times 3 is 12. And we're well on our way towards solving this now. So that is always really the first step to solve the equation for one of those unknowns. Now that we know that y is 3, we're going to move on to the second stage, which is to go back in and substitute that 3 back into either of the first two equations. And it doesn't matter which one you go for, just go for whichever one you think looks easier. In this example, I'm going to substitute back into a. So 2z add 7 times 3 because that y we now know is worth 3. So 2z add 7 times 3 is equal to 23. So therefore 2z add 21 is equal to 23. Well, that must mean that 2z is equal to 2. Therefore, z is equal to 1. And we have now solved that simultaneous equation. We found a value for y and a value for z that works in both of those equations. And we can check our answer by checking exactly that. Let's substitute both of those answers into the second equation, into b, because we didn't use that one just a moment ago. So 2z, 2 times 1, add 3y. So that's 3 times 3 is equal to 11. So in other words, 2 add 9 is equal to 11, and it is, isn't it? So that's a really nice thing about these is you can check your answers at the end. You can see whether you've got it right or not, because if you've got it right, it will work in both of the starting equations. This example, we have 5p minus 3q is equal to 7, and 9p minus 3q is equal to 15. We have the same coefficients for q. They're both negative 3. Okay, now they are negative, but that's absolutely fine. We do the exact same thing. We are going to subtract one equation from the other, and that will have the effect of removing that negative 3q. Now, it doesn't matter which one you subtract. So you could subtract the second equation, the one that I've labeled b, from the first equation. But just looking at that, if I do that, I'm going to do... 7 take away 15, and then I'll end up with doing 5p take away 9p, which is fine. You can do that. You'll get the right answer. Absolutely no problem. But why not make our lives a little bit easier? And let's do the second one, b, and we'll take away the first equation from that. So I'm going to do b take away a. So 15 take away 7 is 8. Negative 3q take away negative 3q. That gives us zero Qs. So they've gone. And then 9p take away 5p, that's 4p. So we end up with 4p equals 8. Therefore, p must be equal to 2. So that is stage 1 complete. Now we're going to move on to stage 2, which is we're going to substitute back in to work out what q is equal to. And we can substitute back into either a or b, it doesn't matter, just choose whichever one you think looks easier. I'm going to substitute back into a, so we know that p is 2, so 5 times 2 minus 3q is equal to 7, or well, 5 times 2 is 10, so we get 10 minus 3q is equal to 7, 10 minus what makes 7 must be 3, mustn't it? So that 3q must be 3, and if 3q is 3, q is equal to 1. And then the final thing, let's check that that is correct by substituting back into the other equation, the one that we didn't use just now, which is b. So p is 2, q is 1. 9 times 2, take away 3 times 1 is equal to 15. 9 times 2 is 18. 3 times 1 is 3, so 18 take away 3, it is equal to 15. So that's a check that you can do, and you know that you got it all right. Now this example has some negatives in it that can catch you out, but I just want to remind you that we don't do anything differently. 
nothing has changed here. The principles, the techniques are identical, but I know that when we end up subtracting negatives, it can it can throw people a bit. So I want to show you and go through an example like that. Just to show you how to do it, make sure you don't make any mistakes. In this one, we have 5n add 4m is equal to negative 2, and negative 3n add 4m is equal to negative 18. Now we have the same coefficient for m. We have the same number of m's. We've got four of them. So we can subtract one equation from the other, and I'm going to subtract the second one, the one that I've labeled B, from the first one, from A. So we have negative two, take away negative 18. So don't forget when you're subtracting a negative, that really has the same effect. It moves you up the number line, doesn't it? It's, it's the same as adding 18. So negative two, take away negative 18 is 16. We've got four M, take away four M. Well, that gives us zero M. We've got no M's, they're gone. And then we have 5n take away negative 3n. So just as I mentioned a moment ago, when you're subtracting a negative, it, it really moves you up the number line, like adding on. So 5n take away negative 3n is 8n. So that gives us 8n is equal to 16. n, therefore, must be equal to 2. Now we can move on to stage 2 of solving this, which is substituting back into one of our first two equations. You can do either one, just whichever one looks easier. I'm going to substitute back into A. So we get 5 times 2 add 4m is equal to negative 2. Or 5 times 2 is 10, so we get 10 add 4m is equal to negative 2. Let's subtract 10 from both sides of our equation there, and that will give us 4m is equal to negative 12. Divide by 4, that tells us that m must be equal to negative 3. And we have our two um, solutions there. We've got n is equal to 2 and m is equal to negative 3. We must check that. So we'll substitute back into b, the second equation, and just make sure it works in there as well. So negative 3 times 2 add 4 times negative 3 should give us negative 18. And negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So negative 6 add negative 12, that is negative 18. So we've done it correctly. So far, all the examples we've done, we've been subtracting one equation from the other. And we've been doing that because in the examples that we've looked at so far, when we do that, it ends up removing one of the variables and you know one of the unknowns. And that helps us to then go and solve the equation. If you look at this next example, 3x minus 2y is equal to 16. 2x add 2y is equal to 14. So if we add these two equations, we get 16 add 14, which is 30. Negative 2y add 2y is just 0. The y's have gone. And then 3x add 2x is 5x. So we get 5x equals 30. That means that x must be equal to 6. If we divide both of those by 5, on to the second stage where we're now going to substitute that value for x, the 6, back into either one of our first equations to work out what y is equal to. So let's substitute it back into a, into the first equation. So we get 3 times 6 minus 2y is equal to 16. So 18 minus 2y is equal to 16. 2y must be equal to 2, mustn't it? 18 take away 2 is 16. And if 2y is equal to 2, y must be equal to 1. The last stage, as always, is to check your answer by substituting back into the, the other starting equation that, that you haven't used so far. So we're going to substitute back into b. And that gives us 2 times 6, add 2 times 1, and it should equal 14. Well, 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 1 is 2, 12 add 2 is 14. So we've done it correctly. So far, all the ones we've looked at, we've either subtracted or we've added the equations. And that, that is all you ever have to do, except sometimes before you can do that, you have to multiply one or other or even both of the equations. And I'm going to talk you through that now. This example has 2z add 3y equals 11. 6z add 7y is equal to 27. I've labeled those as a and b. Here, we don't have the same coefficients 
for either Z or Y, do we? We don't have the same number of Zs or the same number of Ys. And if I look at equation A, I can see I can't easily multiply 3 by something to make 7. I can't multiply it by a whole number, anyway, to make 7. So that's not much use to us. But if you look at the Zs, I can multiply 2Z by 3 to make 6Z. All right, so that's what we're going to do. But what we must do is multiply the whole equation by 3. Let me show you what that looks like. So we've got 2z add 3y equals 11. Well, 2z times 3 is 6z. 3y times 3 is 9y. And 11 times 3 is 33. So it's really, really important you multiply every piece of the equation by 3. Now we've got a new equation. Let's give that a different label. Let's call that C. So that we have equation C now. Now we have 6z in equation C and 6z in equation B. So we can subtract one equation from the other. That will give us 0z. It will get rid of the z's. So I'm going to do, we can do this either way around. I think if I do C, take away B, that will be slightly easier. So I have 6z add 9y is equal to 33, and I'm going to take away 6z add 7y equals 27. So 33 take away 27 is 6. 9y take away 7y is 2y. And then 6z take away 6z is 0. We got rid of the z's. So 2y is equal to 6. Therefore, y must be equal to 3. Then we're on to stage 2. We're going to substitute back in to work out what the x must be worth. So we have, I'm going to substitute back into equation A. Equation B would work just as well. I'm going to go with A. 2z add 3 times 3 because y is equal to 3. So 2z add 3 times 3 is equal to 11. In other words, 2z add 9 is equal to 11. That must mean that 2z is equal to 2 and therefore z is equal to 1. The final stage is always to check that solution that you've got, and we'll do that by substituting back into equation B. You always choose the one that you didn't use for the previous stage. So equation B, 6, Z, so we've got 6 times 1, add 7Y, so add 7 times 3 equals 27. So 6 times 1 is 6, 7 times 3 is 21, 6 add 21 is 27. So we've done it correctly. In this example, 2x add 3y equals 10, x minus y equals 5. We don't have the same coefficient for either x or y, so we're going to have to multiply one of those equations. And clearly, it's, we're going to have to multiply that second equation, b. And we have an option here. We could either multiply it by 2 so that we end up with the same coefficient for x. In other words, we end up with 2x. Or we could multiply it by 3. That way we would end up with a negative 3y. And we've got a positive 3y at the top. Either of those will work absolutely fine. It's just whichever one you think is going to be easier. I'm going to go with the second option there. I'm going to multiply by 3. So x times 3 gives us 3x. And then I'm going to take away y times 3, which is 3y. And then 5 times 3 is 15. So we get 3x minus 3y is equal to 15. Let's label this. This is now equation C, this one that we've multiplied. And equation C has negative 3y. Equation A has positive 3y. We know that if we add those two equations together, negative 3y add positive 3y, they cancel each other out, if you like. It gives us 0y. So we have no more y's, which is exactly what we want. So if we add a and c together, 10 add 15 is 25. 3y add negative 3y is 0. There are no y's. They've gone. And then we have 2x add 3x, which is 5x. So 5x is 25. That must mean that x is 5. On to stage 2, we're going to substitute back into either one of our starting equations to find the value of y. I'm going to go for the second equation. It looks a bit easier. So equation b, that is. So x is 5. So 5 minus y equals 5. This is a bit unusual, actually. 5 take away y equals 5. 
Y must be zero, mustn't it? Five take away zero is five. Don't make the mistake of thinking that you must have got it wrong. If you end up with an answer of zero, or you know, any time you end up with an answer that you weren't expecting, it's, it's a good idea to double check, because it might be that you made a mistake, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you've got it wrong. So I think this is correct, that Y is equal to zero. But we can check. So we're going to substitute back into the equation that we didn't just use. So we'll substitute back into equation A. So x is 5. So we've got 2 times 5 add 3 times y. 3 times 0, in other words. So 2 times 5 is 10. Add 3 times 0. Add 0 is equal to 10. Yeah, 10 on 0 is 10. Perfect. It works in that second equation. So we know that we must have done it right. Well done if you've watched it all so far. There have been quite a few examples. We're very nearly there. You've pretty much seen all the combinations of skills that you're going to need. There's just one skill left, and I'm going to do two quick examples of that. And then I'm going to finish off looking at uh, kind of like a problem solving or an exam style question. It's actually very similar to the example that I did in the introduction, but you might find it useful to look at that as well. So let's look at the first one. 4p add 3q equals 17 and 3p minus 4q is equal to 19. You can see in this question, I haven't got the same coefficients for either p or q. I haven't got the same number of p's or q's. And what we would often do is to multiply either one of the equations so that we end up with the same number of p's or q's. But in this case, I can't do that. Whatever I multiply that first equation by, I'm not going to be able to end up with the same number of p's or the same number of q's. And the same if I were to multiply that second equation. So what we have to do with these is we multiply both of the equations. I can see that if I multiplied that first equation by 4, I would get 16p add 12q is equal to 68. And then if I multiplied the second equation by 3, I would get 9p take away 12q is equal to 57. Now I've got those 12q's. I've got a positive 12q and then a negative 12q. And so now I can add the two equations together and negative 12q add 12q is just 0q. So it will get rid of the q's. So let's do that then. And if we do that, we end up with 25p equals 125. That must mean that p is equal to 5. Now it's just stage 2 when we're going to substitute back into either one of our original equations to work out what q must be. So p is 5, so let's substitute back into the first equation. So 4 times 5 add 3q is equal to 17. In other words, 20 add 3q is equal to 17. If we subtract 20 from both sides, we get 3q is equal to negative 3, and therefore q must be equal to negative 1. The final thing you have to do is just to go back in, check in the second equation, the one that we didn't just use, just to make sure that we haven't made a mistake and that our answers work in both of those equations. So in the second equation then, if we substitute in 5 and the negative 1, we get 3 times 5, minus 4 times negative 1 is equal to 19. So 3 times 5 is 15, and take away negative 4, it is 19. When you take away negative 4, it's like adding, isn't it? So 15 take away negative 4 is 19, so it looks like we've done it correctly. The, the last example is very similar, but it's just a practice, make sure we're absolutely okay with this technique. We have 5k add 3l equals 4, and 3k add 2l equals 3. So we've got a situation where we're going to have to multiply both of the equations by something so that we end up with either the same number of k's or the same number of l's. And there are lots of different ways that you could do this. I'm going to multiply that first equation by 3 to give me 15k and, you know, and the other bits as well. But and then I'm going to multiply the second equation by 5 to also give me 15k. So if I multiply the whole equation then, the first one I'm going to multiply by 3, I get 15k add 9l equals 12. And the second one I get 15k add 10l is equal to 15. 
15. So I'm going to relabel those as equations C and D. And because I've got 15K in both of them, I want to subtract one equation from the other. So we could do it either way around. Looking at them, I think it'll be easier to subtract C from D. In other words, I'm going to do D take away C. So I'm going to set them out like that. And if I do that, I get 15 take away 12 is 3. 10L take away 9L, well, that's just L. And then the 15K take away 15K. We've got zero Ks, haven't we? We've eliminated those Ks. So we're just left with L is equal to 3. Then we substitute back in to either of our starting equations to work out what K is. So let's substitute back into A. Looks like it's going to be nice and easy. So 5K add 3L. So 3 times 3 uh, is equal to 4. So 5K add 9 is equal to 4. 5K must be minus 5 in that case. Minus 5 add 9 is equal to 4, isn't it? So 5K is minus 5K must be minus 1. Just divide that by 5. So the last thing all we've got to do is substitute back into the second equation, the one that we didn't just use, with both of the answers that we now have, just to make sure we didn't make a mistake. So um, we end up with 3 times k, in other words, 3 times negative 1 add 2 times l, in other words, 2 times 3, and it should make 3 if we've done it correctly. Well, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and negative 3 adds 6, because 2 times 3 is 6, it is 3. Three, so we've done it correctly. So the final thing then is just this worded problem. Have a look at that. See if you can solve it on your own. I'm going to go through it in a second. So the only difficult thing with this really is working out how you can turn that into an equation. So we've got those seven yellows add the five blue coins giving a score of 85 and we've got the six yellow and 11 blue coins giving a score of 93. Well, that's going to lend itself very well to these two equations, isn't it? 7y add 5b is equal to 85, and then 6y add 11b is equal to 93. And really from here, it's just exactly the same as all the other ones we've done. So we've got one of those ones where we're going to have to multiply both the equations. I'm going to multiply equation a by 11, and I'm going to multiply equation b by 5. That will give me a coefficient of 55 for b. So they're both going to end up with the same number of b's. So that first equation, we get 77y add 55b is equal to 935. And the second one, we get 30y add 55b is equal to 465. I'm just going to relabel those equations as c and d because they are two new equations. And they both have the same number of b's and they've got the same sign. They're both positive b's. So we want to subtract one equation from the other. Let's do the first one, c, take away d. So 935 take away 465 is 470. 55b take away 55b is just zero. That gets rid of the b's. And then the y's, we end up with 47. So we get 47y is equal to 470. Therefore, y must be 10. And we're just going to substitute back in to the first equation to work out what b must be. So 7y, 7 times 10, add 5b is 85. So 70 add 5b is 85. 5b must be 15, and so b must be 3. And we'll do our check, as we always do um, in the second equation, the one that we didn't use. Um, so 6 times 10, which is 60. Add 11 times 3, which is 33, should make 93, and it does, doesn't it? 60 add 33 is 93. So we're done. The, ye the yellow coins were worth 10, and the blue coins were worth 3. Well done, indeed, if you stuck with it through all of that. Hopefully that's addressed any kind of situation that you might come across when you're dealing with simultaneous equations. As ever, there are questions at our website at mathskitchen.com. Link below link up here. Thank you very much for watching. I shall see you in the next one.